And if you do read this book, Charles Wallace is so cute and so adorable while also being like a robot child. Hey booktube, so today I'm coming to you with another recommendations video. We've always been there where we see a movie and we just wish there was a book based off of it because we would love to read it. I asked you guys over on Twitter at Sinksacroop, your favorite movies of all time. And so today I will be recommending you guys books based off of those movies. This was actually way harder than I thought it was going to be, but still really, really fun. So I'm super excited to get into it. Before I do, remember to leave this video a like, comment down below what you think of these books or these movies. Subscribe and once you do, click that bell notification because I post videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Without further ado, let's get on into the video. And the funny thing about most of these movies is that I actually haven't watched them because I mostly watch Indian movies. And so I had to search their description up online. But the first one comes from Troy, who says Angry Birds 2. That's right, we are a very mature group of book readers on here. So I was reading the description of this movie, and I didn't think I was going to find a book for it. But then I saw the cover, and I saw the word frenemies, and I instantly thought of a book that I haven't yet read, but I just know will be a five star. It's going to be so good. And that is You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson. Can we just take a moment to admire how well made this book is? The spine is just full color, and I love when books do that. It's beautiful. The cover is beautiful. Just the publishers put so much work into making this book and it definitely paid off. This book is about Liz Lighty who thinks she has it all figured out. She's going to go to her dream college and play in the world famous orchestra. But when the financial aid that she was counting on unexpectedly falls through, she has to find a different way to make the money to pay for college. And so in the place where she lives, prom is like this big thing. And winning prom queen could win you a lot, a lot of money. And so she enters to win prom queen, even though she doesn't have very much high hopes for it. But she's willing to do whatever she can to pay for her dream college. However, things immediately turn for the worse when she meets her competitor, who she unexpectedly falls in love with. I just can't wait for this book. It's an element that I always love in books with social media, because I know Liz is going to encounter so many trolls. But I also just can't wait for this book. Everyone's been rating it five stars. Everyone loves Liz's character, and I just cannot wait to read this book. And this is the book I thought of when I saw Angry Birds 2, because the book says frenemies, and in this book, there are characters that are supposed to be competitors, but are actually in love with each other. And I'm just really interested to see which thing prevails, her love for Mac, or her yearning to go into her dream college. All right, so the next one comes from Susan, who said Black Panther. I love this movie. I'm so excited that she mentioned it, but it was so so hard to come up with a wreck for this because black panther is just so original and there's not really a book like it i'm sure you guys could think of one but i can't and especially one that's on my bookshelf and so the one i picked with isn't that good but i'm still really proud of it and that is the gravity of us by phil stamper i love this book so so much but the way that it relates with black panther is that both protagonists obviously have this big platform the protagonist of black panther obviously being like this king and they're both trying to figure out how to use that platform in the right way while also being involved in the system that is not entirely right and so that is the similarity i saw between those two books but other than that they completely diverged this one is a why contemporary and that one is a high fantasy movie but i just thought that that correlation between them was really interesting i just find it so fascinating how people use their platforms and what they do with the millions of people that looking up to them but yeah i actually read this book for reading vlog so i'll link to it right here so you can see all my full thoughts but basically this book is about cal who thinks he has it all figured out on his way to becoming a famous journalist over at buzzfeed until his dad suddenly becomes the new pilot for a highly publicized nasa mission and so his family has to move to texas where they immediately have to try to become the perfect american family cal obviously can't do that and as he meets more people and falls in love with a boy there, he begins to think that some things over at NASA and the media coverage that is highlighting it mm, are a little sus. And this book talks about love and social media while also just having such a new scandal. And it was just so, so interesting. Phil Stamper is such a good debut author. He has such an amazing writing style. And I just can't wait for his future book. The next movie is one that I, of course have not watched and that is onward which was recommended by lily over at lily the book nerd and this book is apparently about two elves who embark on a quest to bring their father back for one day and when i read the description i immediately thought of a wrinkle in time by madeline lee angle i read this book in fifth grade so a very very long time ago but what i do remember is that it was about these very very smart kids who lost their very scientific father years ago but one day at three witches come to them and tell them that their father is being held captive by this evil thing, I, I don't know what to call it, called It. 
and they have to journey through space and time in like this fourth area of time to save their father so obviously the saving their father's aspect but also the strong family aspect is what made me think of wrinkle in time and if you do read this book charles wallace is so cute and so adorable while also being like a robot child all right so the next movie recommendation comes from jesse who said across the universe this one is about a romance between an upper class american girl and a poor liverpoolian artist and so i went with geekerella by ashley poston i actually did a reading vlog for this as well so you can watch that right here but basically this book is about this like middle class girl who was just really really into this one tv show and she writes blog posts about it online and this actor who was cast for the role of a popular character in the series that our girl loves so so much and this immediately causes controversy because people don't think he's the right fit for that role and so eventually in this book a romance stems between the actor who is obviously like a millionaire and this girl Elle. So that's why Across the Universe reminded me of Geekerella. This book is one of my all time favorites. It's just so good. The characters are amazing. Writing style is so, so beautiful. And I just am developing this thing for retellings. Every retelling that I read is so, so good. And this one definitely lived up to that. And I just loved the fandom aspect. Fandoms are such a huge part of why we read and watch movies and so it was really really fun to see it tackled in this book and yeah this book was just like a mashup between like every single trope that i love so i was obviously going to love it the next one from jesse is the greatest showman which celebrates the birth of show business tells of a visionary who rose from nothing to create a spectacle that became a worldwide sensation and so for this one i went with my most recent read and also the pick for the next chapter book club which i just want to talk about for a second we we have all of our six members we have nitty from nitty ready reads troy from troy reads eric from break even books monet from life is monet and nat from this is nat snook and obviously me and our live show will be august 2nd at 6 p.m so i just wanted to share that with you guys because i am so excited for this i hope you are too but our book of the month for the month of july is light by Brittany morris this book is about a girl who creates this video game that just goes viral millions of people play this video game and millions of people look up to her persona in the video game. And so that's why The Greatest Showman reminded me of this book. This book is about Kiera, who is a 17-year-old black teenager. Obviously, she's 17-year-old. She's a teen. I don't know what I'm saying. Who creates this online video game that's played by millions of people who adopt these Nubian personas to play online in this car-playing, role-playing, virtual reality game online. And there's really no harm to it until one day a teen in Kansas City is killed over a dispute in the game and Kira's life suddenly becomes so much more complicated with the trolls online. I'm trying to think of if she caused this incident. It's like being called a violent exclusionary hub on the news. This book was so, so good. One thing I was not expecting going into it was the multiple perspectives, but that just added another element that made this book so more interesting. So this book has amazing characters that you just fall in love with. And the game is way more detailed than I expected. Most times in these types of books, the game is a part, but it's not really developed and it's just like a tool. But the author spent a lot of time developing this game and you can tell she had a lot of fun with it. And I just really, really appreciate that aspect. This book also obviously tackled a very, very important topic in racism and it's so many plot twists that just came out of nowhere. And I highly, highly recommend this book. The next one from Jessie, she recommended a lot that I could actually give you guys recommendations for is Pan's Labyrinth, which involves a bookish young stepdaughter of a sadistic army officer who escapes into an eerie but captivating fantasy world. And right when I read the description, I thought of the entire Land of Story series by Chris Colfer. Chris Colfer was originally famous for something else, being a Glo Golden Globe winning actor. And so I was not expecting much coming into this series, but oh my god, it's so good. I will say the first one isn't as good as the last five. Yeah, this is actually about a stepdaughter and a stepson who venture into this fantasy world where like every single fairy tale character lives in this really really creative kingdom so there's like the red riding hood kingdom the red riding hood is a queen but in it cinderella and jack are these fugitives who are in love and just so many cool things like that and it's just a really really interesting world and chris colford's writing style is so good the adventure is so good 
and every single book was just so so much fun to read and i just love this series so much and i think it's highly highly underrated and like yeah just read this book i want someone to talk to about it other than my best friend because it's just so so good i can't recommend it enough all right so the next one comes from r who says tarzan which i obviously know what tarzan is about everyone does but i haven't watched it because it's me and so i recommend the wild robot because while this book is about a human being raised by gorillas, this book is about a robot being raised by animals. So it's basically the same, just substituting a human for a literal robot who washes up on the shore of this island and slowly makes friends with the animals on that island. And it's just a really, really cute, cute isn't the word I'm looking for, is it? Middle grade book, and I really, really think more people should read it. Basically, this robot who is a her befriends the animals on this island until one day her mysterious past and the reason she drowned up on that island comes back to haunt her and she and the animals have to fight for her will to survive. All right, so the last one is Ultra from R who says, Kill Bill. After awakening from a four year coma, a former assassin wreaks vengeance on the team of assassins who betrayed her. And I also thought of a book that I'm only like 200 pages into, The Count of Monte Cristo. It's a big book. That's why I only got 200 pages into it because I'm just scared. Like, this doesn't seem like a book that has 1,000 more pages. And although it is interesting, uh, 1,300 pages, guys. This book is about this man who has everything going for him, but then is wrongly put in prison. And so he tries to escape to plot the destruction of the three men responsible for the reason he's in prison, even though he's innocent. This book was good in the 200 pages I read. All right, guys, so that is if you like this movie, you will like this book or recommending books based on popular movies. I really appreciate everyone who goes out of their way and responds to some tweets I make. I'm going to be doing a lot more of that in the future, so definitely be sure to go follow me on Twitter over at Sinks the Group. The link should be in the description. So if you did enjoy this video, leave it a like, comment down below what you thought of this video, or some of your favorite movies. I'd love to get some movie recs. I'm going to have to watch these soon. Subscribe, it helps me a lot. I post videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And click that post notification bell right next to the subscribe button so that you're notified when I post new videos. But I'll see you next time in another video. Bye!